This is Scott the Fix-It Guy. Our goal with our videos is to empower you to be able to do the repairs on your own and save a whole lot of money and also get that great feeling of having fixed it by yourself. Today we have a GE dishwasher that stops mid-cycle and this will be true of most dishwashers. All of a sudden they stop. A lot of times it's due to their inability to drain and many times the reason they can't drain is this air gap thing located over near the kitchen faucet. You can hear what kind of weak sounds are draining. On this unit, when you press the start button for more than three seconds, it makes it start to drain. So I'm going to see if this air gap might have a uh, blockage. Pulled off the silver thing. I'm going to push these two little clips away and lift up the top. And the middle part is where you might find a clog. Sometimes you can just lift it out can use one of these brushes too. This is a CPAP um, tube cleaning brush and it reaches way in that into that hole. I can actually see though there's something in there so I'm not even going to use it. You can use a strong screwdriver, a uh, long screwdriver. You could also use just like a straightened uh, coat hanger would work too to get in there and try to knock out whatever is clogging the air gap. This little tube is where water shoots out from your drain tube from your dishwasher. I'm going to put the cap back on. It just clicks one way. It, can't, it can only go one way. The other way it doesn't fit. I'm going to see if it will drain now. Ask it to drain. Close it. Sounds better. Yeah. So I'm unloosening this nut that holds the air gap into position. I'm going to push it down below the cabinet. Just using my index finger to push it all the way down. I'll open up the area underneath the sink and I'll reach in there and grab that tube, pull it toward me. I have a little bowl there to let any water drain out. I'm going to use a wrench to disconnect the hose clamp on this tube. This is the one coming from the dishwasher. I'll pull that off and then some water is going to come out and I'll set it to drain and then let water come out into that bowl. A lot of water may come out, so be ready. You may want to use actually a bigger bowl so it doesn't overflow. Water's shooting out pretty good, so definitely the obstruction is gone. Just want to check though in the air gap assembly. I'm going to pull that cap back off again and just see if there's anything caught in there. You can see a little seed. Looks like a piece of popcorn. I think the customer let me know that they're eating a lot of popcorn recently, but that wouldn't be enough, I think, to cause uh, a drain obstruction, but it might slow down the drain. So I'll put the cap back on, and I'll go ahead and put the hose back on too. Put the hose clamp back, and then tighten it up. You don't have to take the air gap out from underneath the counter like this. It just makes it easier to get to these hoses. You can do it all from underneath uh, the sink. It's possible. So I get that nice and tight, and then I'm just going to push that air gap back up through the hole. I'll use my index finger to kind of feel it, and then I'll use my other arm, my other hand, to push it up to feed it through that hole. Many times just doing the procedure from the top, as we saw earlier in the video, is all that's required. Probably don't have to go to this extra step of taking the hose off, but just in case, so we just want to show you guys how to do it. So I'm putting that nut back on. I'm going to hold it up with one hand and then tighten with my other hand. And I'll put the little silver thing back on to make sure the opening points toward the sink. And I'll set it for drain. Just fill it and drain it a few times make sure that it's it's working good. While I'm here, I could do a little, yeah, it ended up draining it really well. I'll also show you guys how you can do a, a little bit of maintenance work too. I'm going to take out the filter and just make sure it's clean. Put it back in now. I got it nice and clean. I'm going to push it down and turn it until it locks. Make sure it does lock and you can't lift it back up. Take a look at this upper spray arm. You can grab this nut and turn it just a about half an inch in either direction. It should let loose. So 
So I went to my right. And then you can pull it out and just make sure all these holes are not obstructed. There's no food particles in there. If there is, you can push them down in with something sharp and then use water in the big opening to kind of swash around and get, get the little obstructions out. This one looks really good though. I think they're rinsing their dishes. So I'm going to push it back up to engage the plastic lugs and I'll turn it to my left to lock it in. And then I'll just spin it by hand to make sure that it's, it's locked in. Yeah, it looks good. And we got this machine doing great again. It's washing really well and it's draining really well and it doesn't stop mid-cycle anymore. But the reason this one was stopping is just that it had a partial drain obstruction. And we were able to clear that by clearing out the air gap. It's very common for not just the GE dishwasher, but for all dishwashers that have an air gap. If it isn't an air gap, you can do the same thing by disconnecting the drain hose from the garbage disposal. So I'll just press the start button for three seconds to start a drain cycle. I'll close it and we got it. So thanks so much for watching and I hope this helps you to get your dishwasher working again. Thanks so much for watching our video. We really appreciate your support. And when you get a chance, please press the subscribe button below so you can be subscribed and also the notification bell so we can send you more videos about appliance repair. Please also give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. If you really liked the video and it really helped you, please press this new applaud button and you can show your support and also get a nice clapping hands for your video. Thanks again.